Three planet ships descend into Venus's atmosphere, marking the beginnings of the Venus Cloud Colony. These planet ships are deploying the first floating platform, paving the way for human settlers in one year and seven months' time, for the first Venusian-born child to visit Earth in 25 years, and the beginning of terraforming efforts in 30 years' time. Work begins on building the floating Venus colony. The first platform stabilizes 55 kilometers, 34 miles above the surface of Venus. It is located in the so-called Goldilocks zone, with Earth-like atmospheric pressure and temperatures, and is carried along by Venus's super-rotating atmosphere. The construction platform, floating in the acidic atmosphere, has built-in hydrogen tanks in the upper hulls for added buoyancy. Venus has a thick atmosphere, which makes breathable air of nitrogen and oxygen a lifting gas. This makes it easier to build floating cloud cities, but an additional lifting gas in the form of hydrogen is needed to achieve enough buoyancy. The hydrogen chambers are located in the upper part of the platform with the habitation areas below. The Venus cloud colony will float above the hellish surface below and is shielded from solar radiation by the thick clouds above. The platform is protected from the sulfuric acid droplets in the atmosphere by a corrosion-resistant silicon carbide outer shell. Robots deploy solar panels and wind turbines. Smaller domes are built connecting to the main platform. These domes will house living quarters, research labs, and biodome farming gardens connected by sky bridges. Atmospheric mining begins, extracting valuable gases from Venus's atmosphere. A shipping container-sized processing unit is generating methane rocket fuel by harvesting the CO2 and trace water vapor in the atmosphere. The platform has been pressurized and life support systems go online. One year and seven months have passed since the first planet ships arrived, and the next launch window opens as Earth and Venus are close together again. One planet ship carrying 27 astronauts descends into the Venus atmosphere. Three additional cargo ships are carrying an oversupply of life support. The spaceships are communicating with the Venus Link satellites in orbit. Looking out of the spaceship windows, the passengers see a thick yellow and orange fog with fast-moving cloud formations. The planet ships have now docked at the construction platform. Small thrusters and adjustable gas chambers make up the counterbalancing systems. The docking ports are also designed to distribute the weight of the spaceship evenly across the colony structure, minimizing the impact on any single point. It takes around two weeks for the passengers' bodies to adapt to the platform's gravity of 89% after flying through space in microgravity. They continue to live in the spaceship as they prepare the base for permanent habitation. Up in the clouds of Venus, the new settlers will be living in a single day and night cycle of 48 hours of daylight followed by 48 hours of darkness, with the sun rising in the west and setting in the east. The platform's retractable shades and artificial lighting mimic Earth's day and night cycles. As they watch the oceans of clouds drift by, the astronauts study the planet's mysteries and push the boundaries of human habitation. Robotics and plants are installed in the small biodome to start growing Earth food such as clusters of dwarf vegetable patches, reducing the need for future shipments from Earth. The new colonists deploy storm shepherds. These autonomous drones monitor the atmosphere around the colony, tracking sulfuric acid levels, temperature shifts, and inspect the outer shell. A Venus planet ship launches from the floating colony, carrying the 27-person crew heading back to Earth. The second group of settlers arrive with seven planet ships carrying cargo. A team of scientists form a dedicated xenobiology department to study the potential for microbial life in Venus's upper atmosphere. Engineers install a sulfuric acid rain harvester, turning the element into a resource for batteries and industrial chemicals. A dedicated research team is formed to develop new materials that can withstand the extreme conditions on Venus's surface. The earth plants growing in the enclosed biodome are developing leaves with shades of dark green, red, and purple under the yellow-orange Venusian sunlight. 
The Colony introduces Venusian Time, a new timekeeping system for the 48 hours of daylight and 48 hours of night they experience. The Encyclopedia of the Future, Astrochronobiology, the study of how living organisms are affected by the day and night cycles on other planets, exploring the impacts of extraterrestrial circadian rhythms. A dedicated rehabilitation center is built for passengers arriving at the floating colony, speeding up recovery time following the journey from Earth as panoramic windows offer views of the swirling yellow clouds. The medical team trials neuromuscular stimulators, restoring strength with pinpoint electrical bursts after microgravity flights. And they are testing synthetic skin grafts made from nutrient-rich algae grown in the colony's biodome to treat any colony burns and injuries. The colony continues sending probes to their neighbor planet, Mercury, analyzing its mineral-rich crust. A maintenance hangar now repairs planet ships, reapplying acid coatings and replacing heat shields. The first Venus-Earth trade route is established as companies scrape deuterium and helium-3 with unique isotopes from the colony's atmosphere used on Earth for fusion energy, as strict mining limitations have been placed on the Moon. Debates are held on Earth as launches to Venus scale up, competing with Mars. Another Venus colony platform is being built by a separate group of Earth countries, housing scientists for developing energy harvesting technologies. Back at the main colony, a new generation of robots is being designed for surface exploration and resource gathering. The Venus Fleet Academy is training pilots to manually navigate the complex wind patterns in the atmosphere. Life on the colony includes a Venusian book club, where settlers discuss Earth classics, trading physical copies brought from Earth. And the first memory garden opens, where colonists grow plants from their home Earth countries. A fleet of ships is waiting in orbit around Earth, ready for when the launch window to Venus opens. For more sci-fi and to join the Encyclopedia of the Future, become a Venture City member on Patreon. The International Venus Cloud Colony expands and is now a town-sized settlement. People are choosing to remain on the floating colony as more facilities are built. The mascot for the floating colony is the Arilon, a mythical winged creature that soars through the clouds of Venus. Artists send artwork back to Earth inspired by the swirling cloud landscape. A composer named Zanz Timmer creates a Venusian symphony composed using traditional Earth instruments combined with the sounds of Venus's atmospheric winds. On Earth, children are growing up dreaming of living on the floating Venus colony. They see futuristic images of forests inside biodomes and people flying around in jetpacks. The colony passes the 1,000 population mark. The first tri-planet person arrives, having set foot on Earth, Mars, and now Venus. Scientists mentor university students in solar engineering, preparing the next generation for Venus's energy needs. Engineers unveil self-assembling solar arrays that float higher in Venus's atmosphere, able to capture the stronger sunlight above the clouds. And new energy generation systems harness the temperature difference between the 230 Celsius, 446 Fahrenheit lower cloud layers and the cooler colony environment. The settlers establish Station Deep, the first crude research outpost in Venus's lower cloud layers. The colony is expanding in three dimensions. Colonists are listening to Star Radio FM, which is digitally broadcasting across the colonies on Venus, Lunar, and Mars, and to any spaceships traveling in between. The first Venusian novel is published, a tale of a child's quest below the clouds defying Earth's rule. It is serialized, released in installments, and distributed to colonies across the inner solar system. A space telescope now orbits Venus, studying Mercury and the Sun. 
Lightweight robots made from heat and corrosion-resistant silicon carbide have set up robotic bases on the surface of Venus and work on mining and exploration. The robots are discovering liquid metals along with alloys and molten salts. Two-thirds of the colonists are still scientists and engineers, while the other third are commercial residents and support staff. Separate private and military platforms are being built, and more robots are roaming on the surface. The colonists form a Sky Council, debating resource use in the growing cloud settlement. With now over 3,000 people living on the colony, local Venusian policies are created, prioritizing survival and expanding the colony. The first biodome park opens, housing colonies of engineered bioluminescent moths and miniature cloud pools of engineered bacteria that create swirling patterns in fountains. Small finches from Earth, chosen for their size, will soon be released into the park to control insect pests and spread seeds for plant growth. A virtual reality project is revealed, recreating landscapes based on geological data, allowing colonists to virtually walk on the surface. The Cloud Colony celebrates its first festival, the Solstice Drift, blending Earth traditions with Venusian customs to mark their solar cycle. A cultural center is built showcasing Venusian pressure art. Artists form metallic sculptures using Venus's intense atmospheric pressure below the colony. The first babies, twins, are born on the Venus Floating Cloud Colony. The colonists establish a Sky Mentorship program, pairing veterans with new arrivals. The first gene-editing machine arrives, along with next-gen bioprinters. They are able to print human tissue, organs, and integrate cybernetics. A pressure farm begins operations, floating below the colony, where the higher pressure allows for rapid-growing, high-density food that use less space and are more pest and disease-resistant. The Wind Navigation Guild is also established, honoring Venusian flyers with wings based on the number of hours they have logged. A child, tall, skinny, and pale, is the first Venusian born to visit Earth. A dedicated maternity clinic is opened to manage the increase in Venusian births. The first human steps foot on the surface of Venus wearing a specialized rigid armored exosuit made out of a ceramic metallic composite outer shell. Virtual reality goggles stream the surface walk in real time. A colony-wide debate is held discussing Venus's role in solar system politics. Venusian scientists develop bioengineered algae that convert sulfuric acid vapors, turning them into clean air and usable biomass, such as nutrient paste, biofuel, and sulfur crystal batteries. The colony's science team has developed cloud silk, fibers grown from engineered bacteria that metabolize sulfuric acid in Venus's clouds, producing strong, silk like building material fibers. Babies are hypnotized, watching the clouds passing by at the colony's daycare. The settlers have created a shared digital archive, preserving historical Earth memories in the cloud city. And a colony-wide recipe contest is launched, adapting Earth dishes with Venusian-grown engineered ingredients. The Venus Cloud Colony operates the most advanced team and facilities for radiation medical research. They share their work with Earth, Lunar, and Mars, as well as organizations operating space stations, and one company working on cryosleep spaceship journeys. The colony establishes its first public transport system. Pressurized pods glide around the colony sections. A planetary conference is held discussing the future of different Venus cloud colonies. The topic of terraforming is on the agenda. The first Mars-born visits Venus. The floating colony has become self-sufficient. More people are moving their families to Venus. The Earth Seasons Festival is held. Individual domes recreate different Earth seasons for colonists to experience. Winter, spring, summer, autumn, and rainy season. Venus is exporting ultra-heat-resistant ceramics for Earth's industrial uses and space programs. Delegates from Earth are flying for diplomatic talks with Venus's colony leadership. 
The Cloud Choir performs on the observation deck during the colony's long 48-hour nights. Cloud-watching classes in schools teach children to recognize safe clouds and dangerous darker yellow-brown acidic cloud formations. Venus's engineers start a Venusian design expo, showcasing locally produced technology. And the first cloud market opens, where local colonists trade and barter Earth imports for local Venus goods. They trade acid-resistant electronics and Venusian pharmaceuticals, as well as pressure-grown crystals and cloud silk. The Institute for Surface Terraformation is established. Terraforming researchers from Lunar and Mars are recruited and transferred to the cloud colony. Engineers complete the Sun Shield Array. Orbiting solar mirrors are positioned above the colony to reflect sunlight away from Venus and regulate temperatures in the expanding colony sections. Colonists believe this could be the first step in terraforming the surface of the planet. Genetic engineers are working on creating seeds that could survive on the surface. Families organize biodome harvest festivals celebrating the first harvest of a new year. The Solar System View Theater opens. Massive domed screens allow colonists to experience life on Earth, the Moon, and Mars. Star shuttles take passengers on a holiday trip to the skies above the clouds on the night side of Venus to see the stars and the Milky Way galaxy. The Encyclopedia of the Future. Astro-Biological Engineering. The engineering of biological life to survive in extraterrestrial environments on other planets or in space habitats and stations. The colony's first observatory opens. A radio telescope studies the internal structure of the sun and conducts radar mapping of Mercury's surface. Space drones are flying through the winds between the different colonies, making deliveries and transporting people. Geoengineers release engineered extremophile bacteria designed to consume sulfuric acid in the upper atmosphere. A new sport called cloud racing is invented, where racers fly through Venus's turbulent atmosphere in gliders. The settlers build a sky memorial, honoring pioneers who have passed away, with a sculpture suspended in the biodome. The year of the Great Crossing brings tens of thousands to Venus, fueling the Technology Summit, as Earth and Venus align at their closest. The first cross-solar system technology summit begins, where technological innovations developed on Venus are shared with Earth and the other space colonies. Attendees from Mars are present. A small crew of colonists are preparing for the first crewed mission to orbit Mercury. It will take one week for the exo-engineers to reach the planet closest to the Sun. Scientists propose building a low-altitude production plant to forge metallic hydrogen, using Venus's extreme heat and pressure to unlock an advanced energy source. A metallic hydrogen spaceship, if it performs as theorized, could cut travel times from Earth to Venus down to a week using a flip-and-burn maneuver, or two weeks to Mars from Earth. The Solar Sail Regatta launches as teams of engineers race uncrewed solar sails to reach Earth the fastest. The first ice asteroid arrives in orbit around Venus, brought from the asteroid belt to be harvested for materials. The biodomes have grown taller, housing plants, trees, small fields, and lakes with fish. Mammals will soon arrive, such as rabbits to fertilize the small fields, and genetically engineered dwarf deer that will graze and maintain the biodome grasslands, turning Venus into a fully multi-species planet. Robots are finding bacteria on the surface of Venus. It is unknown if the bacteria are local to Venus or if they are a byproduct of the human settlement in the clouds above. Researchers continue to study the long-term effects of living in the clouds of Venus and how humanity will evolve into the future, separating from Mars and Earthborn. What happens next? Terraforming Venus. The third volume of the Encyclopedia of the Future is now available on Patreon.